Well, looks like AMD has a new GPU out and it looks good, but at what cost? Well, we'll explore all that and I'm gonna get you all of the details in this video. So what is it? It's the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT liquid cooled version. And spoiler alert, there's a reason I'm over at a pre-build site like Main Gear. This does not appear to be available for purchasing just the GPU. It seems to be only available at pre-built uh, system integrators, at least right now. I don't think there's any word out on whether we could eventually buy these separately. Okay, so what exactly is this thing? Didn't AMD already launched the top end card, the 6900 XT. Is this literally just the exact same thing, but liquid cooled? Kind of, but it's liquid cooled. The power uh, limit is increased by 30 watts and this is allowing it, and also it's probably just the absolute top end bin chip. So as they've been producing the Navi 21 dies, they're binning the absolute best ones and that's probably where the supply of this is coming from. So these are gonna be running at higher clock speeds, both game clock and boost clock. Higher power limit with the liquid cooling is going to provide better performance. But again, at what cost? Okay, well, let's jump into the performance first and then we'll jump into what's the pricing gonna look like on these things. Okay, well, performance wise, it was hard for me to find an exact spec list, but I did eventually find what appears to be it from like a Japanese uh, site that has the full list here. But again, this is gonna be most relevant compared with the 6900 XT, the normal version. And luckily I popped over to see if any site had put together a nice list yet. And it does look like video cards here. I'll pop out of the way. Oh, oh I messed up. Try again. There, something like that. <laughs> I usually do my cool snappy disappeary thing and it works fine. Anyway, uh, so they've got it stacked up nice here up against the other cards so you can take a look. So this is still the uh, Navi 21 die, but they're calling it the XTXH instead of the XTX to indicate the uh, increase in performance here. It still has the 80 compute units and 5,120 cores. But notice here's the big differences. The game clock, the boost clock have been bumped up. I think the memory uh, bandwidth uh, increases because of that. And the, uh, the, the power consumption is bumped up to allow for all of this. Okay, so how does that compare? Well, we see our game clocks over here jumping up over 200 megahertz compared with the uh, 6900 XT, non-liquid cooled. And then we see boost clocks not quite with the 200 megahertz increase, but still uh, getting close to that. So this should have better performance. Should have better for performance, but like, is this gonna be the best GPU out there? Is it gonna be the best GPU out, there, GPU out there? Well, we'll jump into my thoughts on that in just a second, because I'm gonna talk about why it better be the best one out there if the prices I'm expecting on this um, are what they are. So remember how I said I was over at Main Gear, a pre-built system integrator? I was there to try to figure out what this thing is gonna cost. So if you actually hop into one of their system builds and you select a graphics card, so to be clear here, this is not saying what the cost of the graphics card is. It's not saying that an RTX 3060 is free and it costs $50 for a 3060 Ti. This is telling you that their, their system starts out defaulting with an RTX 3060. That's already part of the price that's on the screen. And then the plus number here is how much more than a 3060 uh, this will cost. But again, this does not necessarily line up with the MSRPs on these cards, because those mean anything anyway, if you're buying the card separately. This is what it costs at this particular system integrator, okay? But we can still see how they are pricing cards relative to each other in the same system. Once again, allow me to disappear, see if I can do it better this time. Okay, <laughs> all right, so. Let's just uh, do the, uh, let's just, let, let's just do it guys. This is by far the most expensive GPU that they're offering right now, by far. I mean, much more expensive than a 6900 XT and even much more expensive than an RTX 3090. 
Like, by how much? Well, again, the RTX 3090, it's not saying that this costs $1,627. It's saying that's how much more they charge than a 3060, right? But okay, look at the relative cost here. So this used to be the most expensive card. Compared with a 6900 XT, which was 1402, they were charging an extra $225 to get the 3090. But if we now jump up to the 6900 XT liquid cooled, it's clocking in at a cool $600 more than they're charging for the 3090. Yeah. And compared with the 6900 XT, we're seeing it clocking in at $825 more. Now, I'm over here at Main Gear. I haven't investigated all the other system integrators to see if they're doing something similar but I doubt we'd see anything completely out of line. You know, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that and you investigate. So, because this is charged at such a premium, I've got to assume that Main Gear is confident that this is going to be the highest performing graphics card on the market if they're charging literally $600 more than a 3090. Now, there's always a premium here for the fastest thing. So I'm not saying that like, it's gonna blow a 3090 out of the water and actually be worth an extra 600 bucks, but I'm saying they better be confident that it is gonna beat a 3090. I'm back. Okay, so uh, how realistic is that that it would beat a 3090? Well, first of all, if you're talking ray tracing performance, it's not realistic at all. But if you're talking rasterized performance, yeah, I think that's fair, fairly realistic. Let's look up some reviews of the 6900 XT, since we don't have the liquid cool versions, but let's just remind ourselves how close that was to a 3090 in rasterized performance. If you go to various sites, like for example, this is Tech Power Up, uh, you can see that at lower resolutions, like 1080p, the 6900 XT is extremely close to the 3090. Um, ig ignore this one down here. This was them testing the smart access memory and, and, and all of that. Um, but this was very close to the 3090. Now, if you look at other reviewers, they even have the 6900 XT beating the 3090 at lower resolutions, like 1080p and 1440p. At Tech Power Up, they don't have that. It really depends on the set of games that you benchmark. Some games really favor RDNA 2 architecture. Some games really favor NVIDIA's Ampere architecture. So, so the set of games that you select can obviously sway this one way or the other when the, when the results are this close. So again, at Tech Power Up, we're seeing 6900 XT close to the 30, uh, 3090 and falling off a little bit more at 4K, right? But it is a pretty close race. Now, just to show you a different set of titles, if you jump over to like uh, Hardware Unboxed, which review a large set of games, this is an 18 game average from their 6900 XT review. You can see at 4K, they did agree that 3090 pulled ahead in rasterized performance. But if you jump back to their 1440p results, they actually had the 6900 XT already beating the 3090. And at 1080p, which would be kind of crazy to buy a 6900 XT or a 3090 for, although I know there's the esports crowd out there which are like, I need 500 frames per second at low settings, you know, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I know you guys are out there. So um, again, they had the 1080p and 1440p results going in AMD's favor. Again, it depends on the set of, set of games that you're looking at. Well, I've got to say that if it was already that close, and the, we're seeing this much of a clock speed jump, including some, of a, some memory jump and a bandwidth jump with that liquid cooling. And main gear pricing things like this, I'm gonna say, I'm expecting the 6900 XT to on average beat the 3090 in rasterized performance. Again, we're not getting into DLSS and ray tracing and all of that. Now, do I think it's worth this kind of a price jump over a 3090? No. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys think about all of this? I don't wanna waste your time. Let me know in the comment section. I read all the comments on my channel. I reply to as many as I can. And thank you to my subscribers, you beautiful people. And you know who's extra beautiful? The people who, uh, like Leonard Smith and Neil Stack, who became members of my channel. I decided to low-key launch channel memberships yesterday. Didn't actually expect anybody to join, on, especially on the first day with a little text post on my community page. But hey, I was wrong. We had some people uh, decide to contribute to the, fan, uh, to the channel financially, which is amazing to me. Thank you so much, guys. 
All right, I hope all of you have an excellent day.